Thank you very much. I, uh, I appreciate that. Maybe we'll just go alphabetically. That'll work out for us in some respects. Jennifer talked about uh, the fact that people need to come home, uh, and indeed, while we were speaking about it politically, uh, there is much to be said for that. Uh, we are blessed to live, as we sang when we sang our national anthem, in the land of the free and the home of the brave. What an extraordinary country we live in. And I hope we don't take it for granted. It's encouraging to me as I look out at those of you that are gathered here, and I see the things that still matter to us as Americans, as Kentuckians, and as Republicans. The fact that we do pledge allegiance to our flag, the fact that we do still sing the national anthem, the fact that we still do open this gathering and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. This is something that I hope we do not take for granted. Because so much of the world, so much of the world wishes desperately and fights literally for the opportunity to have freedoms that we take for granted. There are four good people in this race. You've heard it said time and again, and it's the truth. I respect every one of the gentlemen, and there's no doubt in my mind that any one of them is a far sight better than the alternative on the other side. It wasn't too long ago that it was Democrats who fought for the nomination, and some poor chump on our side got put up to be chewed up in the general election. And that is changing. This year there is one sacrificial lamb, in November, and his name is Jack Conway. And it's our job to make sure that we make that happen. It really is. And I think we can. There's no question about it. Let me tell you briefly about myself. I grew up in the country in a simple way. Some of you know this about me. I was the second of six kids. Pretty much everything we ate, we grew on our own land, both food and animals. I was involved in 4-H my entire life. It was my sole social outlet as a kid. Paid 100% of my own way through college. It was the only way I was going to get to college. Got out of, out of school and went into the military. A former active duty military officer, army officer, got out and went into the private sector. And I've been in the private sector since then. I'm an entrepreneur. I own all or, or part of 10 different companies. This is what I love to do. I employ dozens and dozens and dozens of people. I pay them millions of dollars a year in salaries and in benefits. And I mention that only to mention that this is not theoretical to me. Job creation is what I do. It's what I've done my entire life. I've done it with my money, not your money, and I've been grateful for the fact that I've been able to create jobs that plow these dollars that are paid back into the economy. Buying goods and services, paying taxes, paying salaries. These things matter. It's not theoretical. I'm married. I have nine children. Some people find that to be a large number. We cheated a little bit. Four of them are adopted, but we're very blessed. We've got a full, full house. Some of you maybe remember they were here last year. Uh, today, tonight they're scattered at different swim events and, and other assorted things. My running mate, Janine Hampton, grew up well below the poverty level. She grew up in inner city Detroit to a single mother with an eighth grade education. Janine is the first person in her family to ever attend college. Paid her way through school working at General Motors, got a degree in industrial engineering. Then went into the military, joined the Air Force, was an active duty Air Force officer for seven years. She included a, a deployment in the Gulf War. Janine got out, went into the private sector, made her way up to being a plant manager for a Fortune 500 company in the corrugated packaging industry, got a, a master's of business administration along the way at a top business school, also while working full time. She's extraordinary. And as a black female, she's pretty exceptional and in rare company in the Republican Party in the state of Kentucky. And she is somebody who is representative of so much that our state and our party has to offer. And she and I are Kentucky. We're black, we're white, we're from the country, we're from the city. We're both people that were born and lived well below the poverty level as kids, but have lived the American dream, and this matters. These kind of things matter, and they'll matter when it comes to leading this state. You know, Mark Twain once noted that the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. And although there are four good candidates, we're not all the same. There are differences. And I challenge you, please, to consider seriously as you go to the polls who it is that among the four of us is the right one and what ticket is the right ticket to go into the general election. If you look at things like poverty, it's easy for us to look across the landscape in this state and talk about those that are in need. I grew up below the poverty level. It's not hypothetical for me. It's not theoretical. I know what it takes to move somebody from poverty to a whole nother realm. I know it personally. I can speak about it 
personally. So can Janine. We talk about things like education. I'm adamantly opposed to Common Core. It's not the right answer for this state. It's not the right answer for our students or our teachers. We are failing a generation of young people. And it's why people who have long been advocates on this have supported me and my effort in this campaign. People like Brian Thomas, people like Glenn Beck, people like Judge Napolitano. Because this is an important issue and it's important to Kentucky. We talk a lot about the pension issue. We, we've heard it several times tonight. Everyone will talk about it. And we should talk about it, even though there were nearly 800 pieces of legislation introduced in Frankfurt in this short session. And the only one that even made any effort to address it was House Bill 4, which was referred to, which was intending to borrow $3.3 from our children and our grandchildren. Again, I'm the only person in this race who understands the pension business as I do. I started a firm here in Kentucky in the basement of my home in 2003 that today manages more than $5 billion in pension assets for everybody from FedEx to Caterpillar to the state of South Carolina and everything in between. I understand this business. I have worked in the pension business most of my adult life. This is not something that, again, is theoretical to me. And if we do not elect a governor who understands this and will demand that it be a priority, the teachers that I was speaking to earlier tonight have every reason to fear as they fear for whether or not these obligations that have been promised will be delivered. This is not theoretical to me. We talk about health care. I'm the only one who is running for governor that you will hear from tonight that is calling for a dismantlement of the Connect program. I'm the only one. There is a difference between those of us that are up here tonight. And the reason I am is because there is nothing we are offering our citizens on the state exchange that they cannot get at the federal exchange. Nothing. What we are getting, in addition to that redundancy, is a guarantee starting in 2017 of a cost of a couple hundred million dollars a year that is going to be on the back of our citizens. And that is absolutely wrong. I've made it clear that it will be a priority of mine and I will dismantle it. And for those who challenge that that's even possible, elect me governor and watch it happen. I can tell you that I'm as serious as I can be on it. It was waved in with a pen and it will be waved out the very same way. We talk about things like taxes. I've talked for very specific things. I call for very specific actions. I have a plan and I challenge the others in the race to put out a specific plan. You owe as much. We owe as much to you and you should demand as much. I call for things like removing the inheritance tax. We're one of six states left in America that still taxes people when they die in this state to the tune of 16%. That's ridiculous. The $40 million a year that we get from that is not worth the opportunity cost of driving some of our wealthiest and most well-established citizens to other states where they bring their children and their grandchildren. We've got to start being smart about the way we run this state. If you go to mattbevin.com, you can see every one of these things that I lay out in this plan, and I encourage you to do it. You're going to hear a lot of people talk about our veterans. We have 340,000 military veterans in the state of Kentucky, and we've got real issues as more and more come home. I'm the only gubernatorial candidate you will listen to tonight that is a veteran. This isn't hypothetical to me. This isn't theoretical. I've walked in those shoes. I've worn that uniform. I understand the issues better than some. You'll hear people talk about things like the federal overreach by the EPA. We've heard talk about that tonight. I understand the powers of the Tenth Amendment. I understand the sovereignty of states. I understand very well that those powers not enumerated to the federal government are the responsibilities of the state and of the people. And I, if you elect me governor, am somebody who will govern accordingly. I will not enforce non-legally binding pieces of legislation given to us by the EPA, among others, that come at the expense of the citizens of Kentucky. We are not required to, and we may be bribed with federal dollars, but it will not be enforced on my watch. I'm governor, you have my word on that. Right to work, every one of us will call for that, and we should. We've got to pass right to work legislation in this state. I will, I've got one minute now with this silent timer. I can pretend I didn't hear it. And none of, none of you will be able to disagree with me. I am pro-life. Strongly people often guess that when they see I have nine children. I'm pro-family, traditional family, traditional marriage. I'm a concealed carry gun owner. I strongly believe in our Second Amendment rights. I believe shall not be infringed means something specific. Let me close with this. I pray for my children for two things. I pray my children will have the wisdom to know the right thing to do. Because we live in a world where everything is upside down and inside out and backwards. 
and it's hard for young people. It really is. I pray that they'll have wisdom. I also pray that they will have the courage to do the right thing. Because it's easy to know sometimes what to do, and it's harder to do it. My prayer for each of you is the same. That you will look at this slate carefully. That you will know the right thing to do, and that you will have the courage to do it. Thomas Edison noted that opportunity is usually missed, because it usually shows up in overalls and looks like hard work. We have some hard work ahead of us, but we have great, great opportunity. And my challenge to you tonight is to realize that sometimes the difference between the right candidate and the almost right candidate is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. Please choose lightning. I'd appreciate your vote on May 19th. Thank you.